Hey, good morning. Good morning and welcome to the best football show. I'm Brian Baldinger at Baldy NFL. This is, you can find this on YouTube on the free Odyssey app. Uh, we're here every, almost every day. We're kind of just going through divisions right now. We started yesterday with the AFC West and we took a look at both the Chiefs, the world champ Chiefs and uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. And today I want to take a look at the Denver Broncos and the Los Angeles Chargers and, and really kind of finish up the AFC West and what I see and what I think they might do and what direction they're going. So let's let's get to it. But by the way, you can find me my all my stuff here uh, at Baldy NFL on Twitter and Instagram, my YouTube channel, NFL Network, uh, and all those kind of places. I'm here on the third floor of NFL Films. I spent yesterday studying uh, a bunch of college kids. And uh, anyways, uh, kind of just breaking away to do this. So let's get to the Denver Broncos who are three and three in the AFC West in their first year under Sean Payton. They got off to a terrible start. They were one in five and they were going nowhere. And then they turned it around defensively. They started making a lot of plays. The offensive line came together. They ran the ball better. Um, and they went on a five game win streak and got to six and five, got to six and five, beat the chiefs, turn the ball. took, had five takeaways in that game. Guys like, uh, Laquan Jones, like just players just um, really stepped up. But anyways, and then they lost uh, on Christmas Eve to the Patriots. Remember that one at home? They were in a playoff hunt at that point. And I thought they were going to make the playoffs. And they lost at home to the Patriots. I'll never forget, 26 to 23, Mac Jones. I don't know if it was Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi. It doesn't matter. They lost. And Sean Payton, he was out. He just, he told uh, Russell Wilson, you know, just uh, go get out of here. I'm going to go start Jared Stidham for the last two games, and they split games. They beat the Chargers. They finished eight and nine. But it was the end of the Russell Wilson era. Everybody thought so right when they did it, and and it's over. It's over. Russell Wilson's out of there. They, they got to eat a lot of dead money. Um, and you think about what they gave up to get Russell Wilson, what they gave up to get Sean Payton. They just don't have a lot of resources. And it showed. It showed in free agency. They lost guys like Jerry Judy. They lost guys like Justin Simmons, uh, Lloyd Cushenberry. Uh, you know, they lost starters. Um, you know, they picked up Brandon Jones from the from the Miami Dolphins, and they re-signed P.J. Locke, who stepped in and played well last year when Kareem Jackson was suspended. Um, they picked up Malcolm Roach. And Michael Burton, you know, guys that Sean Payton is familiar with, like they did last year with Adam Trotman and other guys that he had in New Orleans. But here they are um, in their quarterback roster, their quarterback room right now. And this is Sean Payton, who coached Drew Brees for the better part of like 15 years and won a Super Bowl. They're sitting in their quarterback room with Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci. Now, Jared Stidham started a couple games for the Raiders and a couple games at the end of the season last year. I know Jared Stidham. He was, I think he was the number one high school recruit in the country. He went to Baylor with Art Bryles there, and that whole situation blew up, and he transferred. But coming out of high school, Stephenville High School in Texas, I believe that Jared Stidham was the number one prospect in the country at quarterback. Now, that's a long time ago. You know, that's a decade ago, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, this is at one point. He was very highly thought of, you know, and he, and he was. I remember him starting at, at Baylor, you know, his freshman year. He got hurt and missed games and whatnot, but transferred. But what do the Broncos do here? I mean, they did win in eight games, and you saw some good coaching from Sean. You know, it didn't work out with Russell Wilson, and it doesn't really matter at this point. You know, they, they basically just wanted him out of the building. They wanted to start new. But – you know, they've got the 12th pick in the draft. They don't have a second round pick. They gave that, you know, they gave that up. So you go, could they at number 12, could Brock Bowers be there and get a weapon? Could one of the receivers be there? Absolutely. Um, they seem pretty starved from a talent standpoint right now. Uh, but could they go quarterback? And who's available? You know, is, I don't know, Michael Penix Jr. available? Is J.J. McCarthy available? Does Sean Payton like those guys? 
Nobody knows. And you're not going to find out. Um, could they trade back and acquire some extra picks for teams that might want to move up to get one of the receivers or offensive tackles or centers? It looks like they need a center to me. They need a star receiver. Um, they they need a tight end. They need help on defense. Although I thought defensively they played really well last year. I thought that they, um, you know, they, they, um, I thought they, you know, after the 70 point performance against Miami, when everybody wanted to run Vance Joseph out of the building, they really tightened things up and played very well. So that's it. Like you go get yourself a star receiver tight end that will be there, might be there. You get yourself a starting center. Do you go, that seems a little high for a starting center, but they need a center. Um, or do you get yourself a quarterback and build around the quarterback going forward? I mean, they're going to be, they're going to be strapped for uh, really, you know, cap, just picks and money. Like they're strapped right now. Couldn't do much of free agency. So that's where they're at. And that leads us to the Los Angeles Chargers. And it's just so interesting to me. The Chargers, you know, at one point last year, they were four and four. And, you know, they they lost heartbreakers to start the season against Miami. I think that game was in overtime to Tennessee. That game, I think, was in overtime. I mean, just lost heartbreakers to start the season. And they're sitting there at four and four, and you're like, okay, it's the Chargers. And then they just had a monumental collapse. And every week it was – Brandon Staley, watch. Like, when's he going to get fired? All that kind of stuff. Well, you don't have to worry about that now. Jim Harbaugh's here. Joe Hortz, the the, off, uh, the general manager, hired him. Joe Hortz spent his whole career. He's a Philadelphia kid. Went to Slazianum High School in Delaware, Wilmington. Um, spent his whole career with the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, you know, what Ozzie does, Eric DaCosta does, they did this for – Joe Douglas, they did this for Andy White, all the guys that came out of that nest. Like, they they know what they're doing. They've been well-trained. So he brings in Jim Harbaugh. And it's just interesting because Jim Harbaugh takes over for the 49ers in 2011. In 2010, they fired Mike Singletary. They hired, you know, Jim Tom Sula, interim head coach. And they were 6-10. and 10. Remember not last year, the Chargers were five and twelve, not that much different. 2010, the 49ers are six and ten. Harbaugh comes in. They draft Alden Smith. They draft Colin Kaepernick. And they install the pistol formation. And in one year, they went from six and ten to thirteen and three. And a first round bye, and they won the NFC West. Like it was the most one of the most amazing turnarounds in all of football that we have seen. So they didn't do much, you know, since Jim's taken over, they've, they've, there's been a mass exodus, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams to the Jets, um, Keenan Allen traded to the Chicago Bears, Gerald Everett gone. I mean, those are store, four starters on offense gone. Um, they've found a way to keep Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa for now. We'll see what happens. They bring in Greg Roman, you know, Jesse Minner. They bring in Harbaugh's guys. Um, and here you go. And so they've got the fifth pick in the first round. And so the Chargers have drafted two Hall of Fame players with the fifth pick. In 1990, they drafted Junior Seau. In 2001, they drafted the great Ladanian Tomlinson. Is there a fifth pick here where they could draft another Hall of Fame player? I mean, I, I'm not putting it out of their, their their reach. The thing that was interesting in that turnaround in San Francisco is they led the league in rush defense in the first year. Navarro Bowman, like they just put this defense together. Justin Smith, Alden Smith, they turned it around fast. And that's what Harbaugh does. Like, he's got this ability to build toughness into a team. Now, the world is completely different, and the NFL is completely different in 2024 versus 2011. All right? It's just different. How you practice, 
what you can do in practice, how much you can hit, what your offseason consists of. It's completely different. But Jim Harbaugh just did this at Michigan, and he created a tough team. And you just think, okay, with the fifth pick, if they went and got – heck, they could trade out of there and get extra picks, you know, and go get themselves Taliesse Fuaga, you know, trade down. I don't know. With the Jets, I mean, you pick a team. Minnesota that might want to move up and get themselves, you know, a star receiver, quarterback. They could trade down, get themselves an extra second round pick, um, you know, and go get themselves a right tackle. And Rashawn Slater and Fuaga could be their starting tackles. It'd be a pretty good start. Go draft Blake Corum in the second round, probably where he's going to get drafted. Get your running game going and start working on run defense. Because when I watched the Chargers under Brandon Staley and before, it's longer than just Brandon Staley. They were the worst tackling football team I saw. Now, why is that? They were injured and they were terrible, terrible tacklers. You just remember long runs against that team week in, week out and broken coverages like that stuff can get fixed regardless of what era you're in, whether you're in this era where you can't really start your off season until April. Um, you know, you're limited by how many days you can put pads on. All that stuff is real, and it can affect Jim and what he wants to do. But the mental the mental part, the breakdowns in the secondary that happened, and it could play zone defense to save their life. Um, you pick out any game. It was, it was hard to watch. So your defense can be better because mentally they can be better. They can not break down. They can know what they're doing. Um, Jesse Minner is the defensive coordinator. Uh, you can you can actually work on the fundamentals of stuffing the run and making it a priority. And okay, their linebackers are gone. Kendricks are gone. Ken Murray are gone. All right, they got to kind of figure that out right now. But that's what I'm looking for from Jim Harbaugh. I'm looking at maybe not the turnaround that he did in San Francisco from Singletary and Tom Sula to what he did in his first year, but it's going to be different. It's going to be better now. We have not even mentioned the quarterback. You know, you look at we, – we all feel like they've got a, cup, a quarterback in Justin Herbert who has all-world talent and yet has done nothing. You know, hasn't – you know, the postseason collapse against the Jacksonville Jaguars is stuck in every single Chargers mindset. But this is going to be a different day. I think Justin Herbert – is going to be better at the end of games when he's got a chance to go win games. I, I just think the way that they're going to run it, protect him, like he's going to be he, – he needs to be better in tight games where he's got a chance to take the team down the field and win games. I want to kind of – I don't know his record in fourth quarter comebacks right now. doesn't really matter. But I would say this. You're going to see fourth quarter comebacks from this team because there's going to be a toughness. That's gonna that is is gonna be a complete direct proportionately it's gonna be directly coming from Jim Harbaugh and how he molds his his players and his team. Fourth quarter comebacks, toughness, tackling. They're gonna run the ball better. They couldn't run the ball at all the last few years. I mean, they were horrible. And it was just, okay, let's see what Justin Herbert can do throwing the football. And yeah, like Keenan Allen caught 108 passes. Okay. Like they were they won five games and they collapsed. So I think this is I think we're all excited. I am, I know I am. I can't wait to watch the Chargers play. Um I think they're gonna have a fan base that's gonna grow. You're gonna want to be a Jim Harbaugh and Charger fan, the way that they're gonna play the game. And I believe it's gonna start very, very quickly. Um, you know, you remember like just go back to that San Francisco era you know they the 49ers had eight straight losing seasons from 2002 to 2010 eight straight losing seasons Harbaugh Harbaugh in one year had a vision Colin Kaepernick was a big part of it the pistol formation they they hired his coach from Nevada well, they didn't hire his coach they, they took the system from Nevada um and they instilled and installed it and in Harbaugh uh eventually supplanted Alex Smith and 
they were off and running. Now, obviously, Justin Herbert's not going to run the pistol, but they will have the pistol formation in. Um, they will balance your defense up, and you will not know which way they're running, weak or strong, right or left, until the ball is snapped. But regardless, I look for a very quick turnaround from this Chargers team. Can they, can they make the playoffs? I'm not putting anything past what we have seen Harbaugh do at San Diego, at Stanford, at San Francisco, and at Michigan. All he's done is win. And I expect him to do the same thing this time around with the Chargers. That's been the best football show. Today's version, uh, finishing up the AFC West. Look forward to more of these conversations with you as we start getting closer and closer to the draft. Look for the draft breakdowns, the top five players in every position. I can't wait to start stacking the players at offensive tackle and center and running back and quarterback. Um, I'm I'm deep, deep into the draft right now. Got this tight end from Illinois. I can't wait to study today. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Look forward to talking to you real soon.